what's up it's Hannah and welcome back to my channel and hello if you're new here and um, today I'm here with lady and we're gonna show y'all how to tack up your horse Western I've done one of these before but it's been years ago now so I've gotten a lot of people asking me to do an updated one I hope you all enjoy this video and you're able to find it helpful please give it a thumbs up if you are and don't forget to click on that subscribe button to see more of my future videos and click the notification bell and let me know that you did that in the comments for a chance to win a shout out in one of my videos all right so i've got the tack that i use with lady right here let me turn it a little bit so y'all can see this is my saddle i ride in a double t there's lots of mixed opinions and reviews about double t's but i've personally had really good luck with them and then I have my saddle sack um, from Ranch Dressing. I have a tough one wool saddle pad, which I've had for years. And then I use a smart cinch with her. I use the felt with her. I don't use the neoprene because she's really sensitive and the neoprene rubs her raw. So she does really well with the felt ones. And then I ride her in a Andrea Equine halter. This is their training halter and I absolutely love it. Most halters like your normal rope halters or your nylon halters like this one will move around a lot whenever you're riding. And these Andrea Equine halters stay in place really well. I'll try to have it linked below if I can find it for y'all. And they also have a lot of really gorgeous colors. And then I just attach my reins to the halter. Occasionally I'll ride her in boots, sport boots depending on what I'm doing. But today we're just going to keep it really basic with your basic tack. And there's a spider. So first you want to make sure that you groom your horse, which I've already done. You don't want there to be dirt and debris on your horse because if that's rubbing in between your horse and the tack, it will irritate them. and can actually cause them to even buck and be, just be really like irritated. So you definitely want to really focus on where your tack is going to go. So all up here and all under their belly. Um, you know, if you're using a breast collar, you really want to um, concentrate on in here in their chest. And then, you know, up here and all on their face. Uh, lady doesn't really like having her ears touched, so. Goodness gracious, girl. Good girl. Okay, I wanted to rub them until she stood still for me. And then you also wanna make sure their feet are clean. That way you know they don't have any rocks or anything in their feet before your ride. First thing I'm gonna put on her is the pad. Get that really quick. And normally I have all my tack in the barn, but for the video, I just kind of have it all right here on my rack. First, you're gonna take your saddle pad. Mine has this little slot right here that goes over the withers, but normally the front is kind of arched wherever it goes on the withers. So you're gonna come up here and I normally kind of throw it up and then slide it back to kind of smooth the hairs out with it as you slide it back. So just kind of put it on like that. And this slot is going to sit right over her withers. Your saddle pad normally comes, you know, right here before the hip. Um, it just kind of depends on the saddle pad. All saddle pads are different. Just kind of depends on, you know, your saddle and your horse and all that kind of stuff. You want to make sure that it's even. So you don't want it to be like off to the side or anything like that. You want it to be nice and straight. I'm going to take my saddle. And you want to set the saddle, you know, gently on them. You don't want to just throw it. You're going to stand at their shoulder with the horn you know, on your left side. So I'm just going to swing it and then put it gently on her. And again, I want to make sure it's centered with the pad. And then I pull the pad up into the little, um, this is the gullet of the saddle. So I kind of pull it up. I'll kind of push that side up and push up the other side. Just to kind of give her wither some room right there. Um, so it just fits really nice in that gullet right there. And then I'm gonna head to the other side to put on the cinch. Okay, so with the cinch, you're gonna take um, this side. Um, this is a smart cinch. This side has the rollers. The smart cinches are some of my favorites. I'll try to link them below as well. You're going to take this side with the D-ring. You're going to attach it right here. This is the billet strap. And you can see on my billet, it's worn in right there. Um, that's where I put it. And you want these rings to kind of be centered in the middle of their belly. 
but you have to keep in mind that you're going to tighten it so it's not going to be perfect whenever you first put it on. I want to make sure it goes through both holes. Okay, so then when you come back to this side, you're going to grab the cinch up underneath your horse's belly. And you never want to stick your head up underneath the horse in case they went to, you know, kick at a fly or something. You want to just reach your arm underneath. So you're going to keep your head away and pull the cinch up. And if you start too long enough, you can set them up here to get it out of your way. And then you're going to undo your latigo. And I put mine through the top ring. Um, on my smart cinch, but if you just have one ring, you just put it through the one. So I go through the top because it has a roller on it, so it just helps you tighten it easier. Then I go back through and go behind it like that. And I normally use a Texas T. I'll show y'all better how to tie it in a second. But this here is Texas T. It's how I was taught and it's normally what I do. If you do not use a Texas T, you can put it in the holes which you would have to run your lie to go through again. Like this. And you would buckle it These buckles aren't even like worn in because I've never really used them. I don't even know if it's gonna go in there. There we go. And then you wanna make sure you fasten it. This part is really important, y'all. Um, a lot of the times, let me get my camera so I can show you. A lot of the times when people are doing their cinch like this, they will just, you know, put it in the hole and they'll leave it. It's really important that you grab um, the front of your latigo, the first, you know, one right here, and pull it to fasten that buckle right there. Because if you don't pull it, it's just going to kind of be hanging there, and it's not really secure. Most people like to do this instead of the Texas T, because if their horse were to fall on them or anything like that, um, the saddle is really easy to get off because you just pick this up. And the buckle comes, you know, down and you can undo it. Um, if you do the Texas T, it's important that you have a knife with you in case of emergency and you can cut it. You know, if it's an emergency and you cannot untie it fast enough, I have a knife um, holder right here on my saddle in case you need to cut it in an emergency. If you don't buckle it and you do the Texas T, first you put it you know, through the first slot, which has the roller, if you're using a smart cinch. Um, if you're not and you just have a D-ring on this side, you just put it through the ring. And then I'll put it through the bottom. I just run it through twice when I do the Texas T. And then you're gonna come out to the left. And then I normally tighten it just a little bit. You wanna tighten your cinch really slow. It's painful if you tighten the cinch really quickly. So normally you wanna put it on kind of loose but not to where the saddle will you know slip off and then I'll normally lunge my horses so they can like get their breathing you know normal and because horses will try to puff up so I'll try to get the horses breathing you know normal and then I'll come and tighten it and then lunge them again and tighten it you definitely want to make sure your cinch is good and tight before you get on so bring it out to the left you're gonna cross over towards their tail um, bring the tail end of this uh, latigo go back up through the ring like that and then you're gonna go back down through the hole you made just like that and then to tighten it you just kind of loosen it and grab this top piece right here and you just kind of pull it up and then you pull the slack out and tighten it if you have a lot of slack from your light ago you put it right here through that keeper and this is how I was taught so this is how I've always done it but if you feel more comfortable buckling it that's fine but like I said, make sure you fasten it if you just buckle it. I'll show y'all one more time with how to buckle. You gotta run it through probably a third time since the holes are, you know, towards the end. Again, to tighten it, you're gonna grab this top one like that. And I think this is the one I put it through before. This right here is how you don't wanna leave it. 
that could easily come undone. So you want to take this and pull it to fasten this buckle. That way it doesn't come undone. Um, I don't have enough slack to reach up here, so I would just kind of stick it in like that so it's not hanging and dangling everywhere. During an emergency, this way is just easier to pick it up, to undo it, and to take it off. I'm gonna do it real quick like I normally do, and I'll show y'all how I put on her halter. Slack up here. What are you doing? You're such a good girl. Okay, so then with the halter, which I gotta take the leader up off of it. A lot of the times, depending on the horse, um, I'll take the halter and I'll put it around their neck and buckle it so they can't just like walk away. I still kind of have control over their neck. Especially if you're like in public and you're not like at home, you know there's other riders around you and stuff. Definitely do that just in case they try to walk away. So then, I just take the nose band of the halter and then that piece over. And with rope halters, you're gonna take this piece, run it through this loop, and then you're gonna kind of adjust it. And you're gonna take the tail up behind the loop towards their face, and then you're gonna take it through the hole back towards their neck. So it's gonna look like this. So that's about what it should look like. You want to tie it on the um, loop. You don't want to tie it above it. So then I'll take off the lead rope. And normally, like I said, I lunge my horses before riding. So I wouldn't take the lead rope off at this time normally because of lunging. I'll normally just bring my reins with me. So then my reins, I'll just buckle on the loop down here. I just clip them to the loop because she goes off of mostly leg pressure and she neck reins. I just put them here instead of having them up here. And then you can take your halter off and buckle it to your trailer or your hitching post or wherever you're tacking at. And there we go. That's her basic tack that I'll use for her if I'm not using boots, breast collar, and that kind of stuff. You've been so good. He's a pretty girl. I hope that y'all enjoyed this video and you were able to find it helpful. Please give it a thumbs up if you were. And feel free to leave your video requests down in the comments as well. Today's notification shout out goes to Marissa. I'm gonna have it up on the screen. Thank you so much for all of your support. I appreciate every single one of y'all so very much. I love y'all and I thank you so much for watching. I'll see y'all next time. Bye.